TCU missed out on a couple offensive linemen they had targeted from SMU in the transfer portal, but a center with some ties to TCU hit the portal today, and he's got a do not contact tag. Could the Frogs be involved? We'll talk about that next here on Lockdown Horn Frogs. It's your team every day. You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Horn Frogs, your team every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We hit 1,100 subscribers yesterday, which is really cool. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Keep subscribing on all the various platforms. Uh, I'm at Simcox Steven on Twitter. The show is at Locked On TCU. We're talking transfer portal today and a topic that we've been frequently hitting on all off season. What will the TCU offensive line look like? They have revamped it so far in the portal. We're getting guys like Bless Harris at tackle, who was a starter at Florida State when he was healthy the past few years. Remington Strickland, who has been running in the two deep at Texas A&M for a few seasons. Carson Bruno from La Tech appears to be moving from tackle to the interior offensive line position, one of the guard spots. He's played a lot of snaps in his college career. Cade Bennett coming to TCU later this offseason from San Diego State, another interior offensive lineman. And a player hit the portal yesterday. A a quick update before we get to a possible new target in the portal for TCU. There were two offensive linemen that the Frogs had on visits. They played at SMU last year. Both were all-conference offensive linemen. This past season, Branson Hickman, the center, and then Marcus Bryant at tackle. Marcus Bryant committed to Washington about a week ago. And Branson Hickman hadn't really heard much about his recruitment, but a couple days ago, he announced that he will be headed to Oklahoma. So they missed on both those players. They were interested. It didn't end up working out. A player that hit the portal, though, today, that has some ties to TCU. Alabama center James Brockermeyer. A few offseasons ago, TCU took Tommy Brockermeyer from Alabama. He had dealt with some injuries early in his career. Tommy was at one time one of the top recruits in the nation at the tackle position coming out of All Saints Episcopal. James went to the same school. They were both at Alabama for a few seasons. Tommy got here, spent last year dealing with a back injury, eventually elected to have surgery and got shut down for the rest of the season. And then this offseason, he decided to medically retire and is moving on into a life post-football, or at least post-playing, because he's still involved with the program. He is currently listed as a graduate assistant on the TCU football website. So James's brother is here. His mom and dad is someone, I put that out on Twitter today, that his brother's on staff, his parents or here, he's from Fort Worth. He played high school football in Fort Worth. James put a do not contact tag reportedly on his portal entry, which means he's telling schools, don't reach out to me. I don't want to go on visits. I don't want to go through the recruiting process. I know where I'm going to end up. He's got two years of eligibility left. He could go to an SEC school, but the SEC has a rule that if you transfer in the spring, within the conference, you have to sit out for one season. So he would be foregoing a year of eligibility by doing that. With his connections to Fort Worth, could he end up at TCU? I think this would be a great pickup. James was running with the first team and was a starting center during Alabama's spring game this past week. Was their starter during spring practice? So that might beg the question for you, if he was a starting center at Alabama, under Kalen DeBoer, new head coach there. Why the heck would he be leaving and trying to find a spot somewhere else? This is from Bama 247. Parker Brailsford is a Washington transfer. He followed Kalen DeBoer to Alabama. And he missed most of spring practice for non-football reasons, but he was an All-American player last year at the center position. So my read on this is, and my guess, not really a guess, I mean, it's just the only thing that makes sense, to be quite honest about it, is that Parker will be the starting center, and the coaching staff made that known. That's the reason he followed his coach from Washington to Alabama. 
even though he missed spring practice and missed the reps, he's still going to be the guy. So whether this was Washington saying, or excuse me, uh, the coaching staff there to Alabama, Kalen DeBoer and company saying, hey, James, I think it's best if you go somewhere else. Or if it was Brockenmeyer just reading the tea leaves, seeing the writing on the wall and thinking, eh, it's probably best for me to move on. That's what's happening here. How would he fit with TCU's offensive line if he made it to campus and was part of the program? Well, he's appeared in 15 games over the past three seasons. Now, uh, Bama reporters made sure that it was known that that was mostly in a reserve role. He played on special teams last year in 13 games. Plays the center position, which is where Colton Deary was in spring practice for TCU. Colton spent some time at guard and center last year. I think the cool thing about this is those interior offensive line positions, for the most part, are interchangeable. Now, your center has multiple responsibilities. First one, obviously, you got to snap the ball. Snap's got to be good. You're also communicating in most cases, and you're addressing, all right, where is the pressure coming from? What type of look is the defense giving us? How does that affect our blocking responsibilities, especially in the pass protection game? So you need somebody there that's smart. You need somebody there that is uh, willing to, you know, be a vocal presence and can quickly get up to speed with everybody else. If he got here, I think there's potential that you could put him at center and move Deary to one of those guard spots. Then you've got the ability, the flexibility, with the other guard position, competition between Cade Bennett, Remington Strickland, Carson Bruno, that gives you some good depth at that interior offensive line spot. You could also leave Deary at center if James would be open to moving to one of the guard positions. And again, now you got Deary, Cade Bennett, James Brockermeyer, or Carson Bruno, or Remington Strickland. It would give you the opportunity to get a great look at all these guys during fall camp. And as I've said, as we've talked about the offensive line, you just need to find the best five guys. There's some position flex here. Now, not everybody can go guard to tackle, all those things. But you want a solid five guys who can get the job done, can keep Josh Hoover upright, and get some push in the run game. And then you need players behind them because the bottom line is it's one of the most physical positions on the field. You're going to have injuries. You're going to need to have some interchangeable pieces. So this adds much needed depth to that position. group. At the very least, if they added James Brockermeyer, it would be good competition between him and Deary for that starting job. Competition's always good. But again, I really think this is more about where could he fit on the interior offensive line, giving you some chess pieces there, giving you some depth, and allowing those guys to just fight it out here in fall camp and see who emerges as the leaders and as the best player on this, best players on the team. I'm not going to shut up about this. I know people are probably tired of hearing it if you listen to the show every day. In my mind, the O-line is the key to it all. I mean, honestly, on both sides of the ball, that's just football 101. You need to be good in the trenches. You have to win the line of scrimmage. But for this offense to hum and to function, I like what they have at the receiver spot. I think that's going to be the deepest group on the team. Running back, I know there's some concerns there, but I feel like there's talent. And if you're able to block, and especially with what Kendall and, and Sonny like to do, and spreading people out. Hopefully there's going to be some light boxes on early downs, especially, that will allow Cam Cook, Trent Battle, Trey Sanders, Nate Palmer, those guys to navigate and get yardage. If you can't block, it doesn't matter. And last season we saw with the play calling in the red zone, we saw with the play calling in short yard situations, there was an inability to trust the offensive line. When you when you can't get pushed in the run game, when you can't protect your quarterback, 
It limits your playbook. How many times last year can you sit and think of instances where TCU threw the ball vertically down the field and connected with wide receivers? They had some big plays in the passing game. But I'm not talking about hitting J.P. Richardson on a 10-yard route where he bounces off two defenders and makes a great run after the catch like he did against BYU or West Virginia early in the game. I mean, those, those still count as big plays. But it's hard to consistently do that. It, it wasn't like when they had Quentin Johnson and they were taking shots down the field. And even if the offense wasn't always super efficient, they could always fall back on plays like that. And there were other guys that got involved in that. I mean, Tate Barber had some you know, great receptions. Savion Williams. Gunnar Henderson had a long touchdown catch against Oklahoma. It's busted coverage, but you get the picture. You can't run concepts like that, long developing pass plays where it takes time for receivers to get down the field and double moves and all those things if you can't protect your quarterback. So with still a relatively young QB and I think good skill players, but you have to have the ability and the confidence and the time to have the full advantage of your playbook. And just to have the consistency to get yardage in the run game and get positive plays in the run game when you need them so that teams respect that. So I think this would be a great pickup. I would also, if I were TCU, and I don't have a great feel for all the options right now, I still think you probably need a tackle. I hope it works with Bless Harris and potentially Michael Nichols. but. I mean, the question mark with Bless has, has been throughout his career. He can stay on the field. Nichols was also in and out of the lineup last season. Ben Taylor Whitfield got some valuable experience last year. I'm not sure he's ready to just step in and play tackle. Robbie Rochester, same type of thing. So I, I think there needs to be a plan to add two of these linemen, one in the interior, one outside, as a guy that can play uh, one of those tackle spots. Probably most likely right back. This would be a good start, though, if you're able to land James Brockermeyer. One more thing about this topic. Some of you might listen to this and hear, oh, he made an appearance in 15 games over three seasons, pretty limited snap count, was in mostly low leverage situations, if we want to use a baseball term. I think they call it high leverage. I don't really think they refer to it as low leverage situations, but you get what I mean. Game was usually in hand when he was getting snaps on offense. Well, Steven, I like to ask rhetorical questions like that and refer to myself in the third person. Doesn't that sound like a lot of the guys that they went after last year in the last portal cycle that didn't work out? Players that were from Power 5 programs, and maybe it was because of an injury history, or maybe it was just because they were behind in the depth chart and said, you know what, I don't want to be second or third string. I want to have a chance to start, so I'm making the jump to TCU. Yeah, that does sound like a lot of the guys that they went after last portal cycle, and the majority of them either didn't work out or didn't live up to the expectations that we put on them coming into this past year. On the, on the positive side of that, I think, if you're hanging on the Alabama offensive line, and this is a little bit different of a situation, you know, Tommy, the injuries were there. James has stayed healthy for the most part. He was a contributor on special teams. He was running with the ones this spring. Now, yeah, it's important to add the, the context of he's leaving because it appears that they're going to go a different direction at that position. But he was also named one of the most improved players in spring camp. He turned some heads there. And, again, I just think at, at the very least, you would add some good competition either at the center or guard spot and give yourself some quality depth. And that's something you desperately need in that O-liner. So I'm hoping that he put a no-contact tag on there because he's, he's ready to move back home, be in Fort Worth, be with his family, and 
He's ready to play for A.J. Ricker and get this offense humming again and get the team in a better spot. When we come back, TCU basketball, they had an intriguing visitor earlier this week. We'll talk about that and more next. It's Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. Monopoly Go, exciting new game. It's sweeping the nation, and you should download it today. Do you love having fun with your friends? Do you need something, like you're watching a sporting event, it's halftime, scoreboard's not looking good, you're feeling low, you're not sure your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, it's time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heist, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game, Monopoly Go. Let you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a monopoly you love, but with on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can work together with your friends to crack open, can crack open community chest. And in tournaments, get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. Download it today. Monopoly Go. It's for free on the App Store or on Google Play. Download Monopoly Go today. Proud sponsor of the Lockdown Network. Do you want to play, bet, make some money? Download FanDuel today or go to fanduel.com slash lockdown and you can automatically make your first bet a winning bet just by putting $5 down if you do that. You're going to get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's right. One $5 bet gets you $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. Or they have the FanDuel app, which is super easy to use, super easy to navigate. NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball. Or if you want to start preparing for college football in the NFL, they've got some prop bets there for you for the upcoming season right now. FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. Or the FanDuel app. FanDuel is where the game starts. Official betting partner of the NBA and proud sponsor of the Lockdown Network. Quick recap on what TCU basketball has been doing in the portal. They lost Micah Peavy and Jacoby Coles. Micah Peavy headed to Georgetown. Jacoby Coles on his way to Grand Canyon. But they've added three players so far. Frankie Collins, point guard from Arizona State. Averaged 14 points a game last year. Noah Reynolds from Green Bay, known as a good spot-up shooter. 20 points a game last season for Green Bay. Also had a good couple years at Wyoming. Shoots 35% from three. Good free throw shooter. Can get his own shot. They added Brendan Wenzel yesterday from Wyoming. He played with Noah Reynolds during his time in Wyoming. And he's got great size. 6'7". Ability to shoot the three, ability to put it on the deck and create his own shot. Again, all those guys good at adapting and making things happen off screen and roll type situations, which will be great or should be great for Ernest Day, who's coming back next season. And they had an intriguing visitor earlier this week. Now, Khalif Battle was on campus for a couple of days. Uh, reportedly, he's headed to Kansas State next, Jerome Tang and company. Kansas State already landed uh, Doug McDaniel, who's another TCU target from Michigan, and they missed out on him. Hopefully, Khalif Battle is somebody they can land. He put up some good numbers last season in Arkansas. Arkansas was kind of a mess, but he almost averaged 15 points a game, 14.8, 40% shooting, 35% from three. He can get to the rack. He's very athletic. Uh, 37% of his field goals came around the rim last year, and he shot 46%. In those opportunities, you see the ability when you watch him put the ball on the deck, get to the rim, finish around the rim. A good player in that regard. Also a really good shooter. A couple of years ago, so before he was at Arkansas, and this is you know typical of the transfer portal where we live in. This will be Leaf Battle's fourth school. He was at Butler for a season, spent three years at Temple, where he averaged 15 points a game, 21 points a game, and 17 points a game. Really shot the lights out at Temple. Uh, 48% from three in 2021 and 2022. Those numbers dipped down in other seasons, but shows the ability he has to make it happen from beyond the arc. Um, and then his last season at Temple, 17 points a game, 
last year at Arkansas was, again, big-time scorer. I like this pickup. I think it gives you another guy who can create off the dribble uh, while also stretching the floor with his ability to shoot. And that's that's my key this offseason for James Dixon squad. Getting more capable scorers who can make things happen in the half court. Because last year they really didn't have isolation scorers who could break things down off the dribble. And they didn't have uh, outstanding spot-up shooters either. So it made it very tough. Um, when the game slowed down, they were forced to get buckets to do that on a consistent basis. But Khalif Battle in on a visit seems like a really good opportunity for TCU. Hopefully they can land him and continue to build this roster um, along with the young guys they got coming in and then some redshirt freshmen who should be ready to play in a more expanded role this upcoming season. When we come back, we'll uh, get into some of your thoughts here on Locked On Horn Frogs. It's your team. We do it here every day. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. If you need tickets, you should download the Game Time app. Use the promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Again, that's Locked On College. You get twenty dollars off. Do it on the Game Time app. Download it today. Sporting events, uh, comedy shows, theater productions, whatever you want in the DFW area. It's there on the Game Time app. They let you see what your view from your seat's going to be. They also tell you up front what the fees are, so you just you just pay that total. You don't have to worry about oh man. I got hit with $20 of hidden fees at checkout. No, Game Time is, is very transparent with what they're charging. Download the Game Time app today. Use promo code Lockdown College for $20 off. Game Time, uh, the best place to get tickets on the secondary market. A couple of days ago, I did a show about Sonny Dykes. He admitted to Mike Craven from Dave Campbell's Texas Football in an article recently that they gave the team too much time off after the national title game. And it sort of threw off their schedule, especially with a new offense coordinator, uh, threw things into whack. So I was curious what your guys' thoughts were. Um, some of you chimed in. Justin McGuffey said, I feel like the lessons learned after the Natty are incredibly valuable. Even the year after has a learning curve with a retooling, reloading, and managing expectations. Sonny now has had some time to cook with not wasting any time with a bowl game. I'm hopeful about this season. Yeah, I mean, you, you hope that last year was a wake-up call from a mentality standpoint. And I think, you know, it, it'll all come down to what happens between the lines when the game starts. But we've seen an adjustment in the types of players that they recruit, at least in the transfer portal, going after uh, more guys that have valuable experience regardless of the level of football it was at. I'm hopeful that there's going to be more accountability and just a, a better and bigger sense of urgency this year. And that in itself, um, would make a huge difference. Jim Norris said, enjoyed the show today. Uh, one thing I've learned around being around football, on every level, it's a coach-centric game. Jimmy Johnson, Dallas, Bill Walsh in San Francisco. Jim Harbaugh at Stanford and uh, Gary Patterson, you know where. He doesn't think Kendall Browse is the guy, but he hopes he's wrong. I mean, it's definitely a coach-centric game. You know, I think basketball, you can really be helped out by a coach. You can run good sets and do – you know, great things, creative things, but in a lot of ways, individual matchups will tell the story. Baseball, you know, managerial decisions, in-game strategy, yes, big deal. But in a lot of ways, it's pitcher and hitter going at it so many times a game. Football's a team game. You need everybody pulling the same rope, everybody doing their jobs, and you have to have, you know, coaches that have teams fired up and focused and ready to play. Tyler Jones says the playoffs were during the portal window. Dykes and his staff failed to recruit effectively during this period. They were so concerned about the playoffs, which is understandable, that they weren't recruiting for the future. They took Brockermeyer, Earl, and Sanders with no evaluation. He says it was total failure. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Like, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. I think they had an opportunity to go after some guys that, maybe you wouldn't typically give them the time of day, both in the high school ranks and the portal. And they had some mixed returns there. And so they've kind of reset what they're doing. They're going a different direction now, and I'm hopeful it's going to work out. I think JoJo Earl could be a really good player for this team this year. You know, Tommy is just 
health situation. Didn't work out. I still feel like that was worth the risk. And who was the other player I mentioned? Let me look here. Trey Sanders. Yeah, again, health situation. I think Trey did some good things for him. I'm hopeful that he could be an effective player in short yardage situations this year. But I get your frustration. I mean, they, they whiffed on some of those valuations, uh, at least for guys who are going to make an immediate impact this past season. We'll be back tomorrow to wrap up the week. It's Locked on Horn Frogs, your team. We do it here every day.